everybody back again with another short video hope you're keeping well now you might recall I got an Atari 800 in the previous video but what came with it was this uh, an Atari 410p actually uh, tape recorder for loading and saving games but uh, it's not working properly although the play key works there some of the other keys don't actually work uh, fast forward rewind don't work they're very stiff Oh, wait a minute, uh, uh, that is working now, so maybe that's okay, and rewind's okay, but uh, it's certainly not fully functional, so mm, it does need a little bit of looking at, uh, so I think I'm going to need to take it apart. Um, before I do that, let me just show you something a little bit odd with this, which is this connector, very Atari thing, that connects into the computer. What it means is, by the way, that you can't actually load a program until the computer's ready. And we've also got a power port around the side there for uh, DC power from uh, an adapter. Um, the other thing that makes this odd is you don't have a pause key. Uh, it, was, it marks it out as one of the early tape recorders on the Atari. Uh, just looking inside though, there does seem to be a drive belt that's a bit loose there, so I think the issue to look at first on this tape recorder is drive belts. I don't know if you could see that on the video, but um, I'm going to open it up, have a look at the drive belts and uh, see if they're perished, which is often an issue with these tape drives after this amount of time. Um, just while I'm opening it up, uh, the 410p, which is this version, seems to be the earliest uh, release of the tape deck that Atari produced for the Atari 800 and Atari 400. Uh, it didn't uh, stay in production very long, maybe only a year, 1979 to 1980, and then was replaced with a later version that uh, had integrated PSU as well. Um, and a pause key. So this is a relatively unusual model uh, and it would be nice to get it working if it's possible to do that. Alright, screws are out. Let's try and get that case off. Should just pull apart. Yeah, there we go. And a uh, cunning little bit of design here which is that side panel pulls out so the two halves do separate entirely which is really uh, makes life a lot easier. Okay, so now we can see the internals a little bit better. Things generally look in uh, half decent condition there. Uh, and you can see this is the main drive belt here. Um, it hasn't broken, so that's good, but there does seem to be some sort of uh, kink in it just there. And on the other side, this thing's well, pretty slack as well, isn't it? Um, so I think any problem is going to be because of that drive cable. The other one is for the tape counter. That doesn't look... well, it's alright, but uh, it's the main one that's the issue. Um, let's just give one of these pulleys a turn. And you can see there the drive belt's not moving at all. If I ch turn the motor over a bit, well, yeah. It's m moving the flywheels a little bit, but... Meh. Yeah, it's sort of half working, but that uh, slackness in the cable, which is pretty usual for a belt of this age, and the uh, flat spots won't be helping at all. So I think the issue here is to change this main drive um, band first, uh, not worry too much about the counter one at this stage. Let's get that main belt switched over and uh, see if that fixes things. Yeah, it's just really pretty slack. Um, got pretty old that I think. Let's just have a quick look at that drive uh, drive belt. The belt I could see from the front. Uh, actually now I look at it again I think all I'm seeing is the belt for the counter um, through the top and actually that's uh, normal. It's a bit slack so that might not actually work once we get the thing going but uh, I don't think that is going to be the root cause of any problems here with the the tape player at all. Yeah, I can't actually get the counter to count, but uh, I don't know. That may not be anything to do with uh, the belt. It may just be the way the thing is uh, 
set up here on the bench. Okay. I think the thing to do is to get this belt out uh, and replace it. So just very really carefully here, let's unloop that belt. Now, there we go. And unhook it. I don't want to cause any problems while we're doing it. There we go. Uh, and let me show you that a bit better. Well, you can see the kink there very clearly, but also it's pretty misshapen. It's not very circular looking a bit like it's lost its rubberiness so let's get the new one side by side there it is and you see how much rounder it is and a uh, similar size but a lot more elastic in it that's quite bristle quite hard uh, the new one as you'd expect a lot more elasticated so let's get that in there carefully just loop that around the pulleys and get that right yeah okay and then move the drive motor yeah. yeah there we are yeah okay so that's turning now I think you can see but oh wait a minute there's a kink in it hang on let's Correct that. There we go. That's better. Right. Uh, as I turn the pulleys there, you can see the main wheel there, the main pulley turning around as I turn it. And it's looking like that's got a nice amount of uh, tension on it. So let's turn that pulley. I don't know if you can see, but that is turning the other ones. And uh, the middle pulley, yeah, that's turning them. And the drive motor itself, yeah, it's a bit hard to see, but uh, uh, yeah, as I turn that, you can see hopefully that that is turning the other two pulleys. So um, I think that has done it, at least that aspect. Um, oh gosh, that is a really dirty case. Right, let me go and clean that. Right, I'm back with the uh, cleaned out case. Let's put this back together. Hopefully that belt fix has done the job. Um, but the only way we're going to know is to put this all back together. See if it turns the spindles uh, once I power it up. That will be a key test. And then if that passes, then the next thing to do will be to get it um, hooked up to the Atari itself and see if we can load anything off it. Of course there might be something else wrong with this tape deck but uh, we'll only know when we test it. Okay there are the screws. Uh, so there she is all back together. Now just on the back here it's giving me the power input 6 volts 300 milliamps and uh, from checking out online center positive through a 3.5 millimeter jack which I've got here uh, this is all powered up so let's plug that in move these cables out of the way and turn it on now I don't know if you can hear but the motor's running there and uh, it is turning around and rewind yeah same thing so that is looking good Let's get it hooked up to the Atari and see if we can load something. Okay, here we are back with the tape deck uh, attached to the Atari and all ready to go. I've got my copy of Attack of the Mutant Camels, so let's get that in the tape player. And uh, we hit play. Actually, on the Atari, nothing happens when you hit play. We go through this slightly unusual startup sequence. So, back over to the Atari. Uh, we hold down the start button and turn on at the same time get that tone and hit return and that is what starts the tape actually rolling uh, as I say unusually with the Atari 400, Atari 800 and so on uh, the computer itself starts the motor turning on the tape decks and that's rolling now you probably can't hear the tape moving around but I can assure you it is loading uh, and then we have that nervous wait to actually hear 
Oh, wait a minute, the speakers are turned down on the monitor. There we go. So you can hear the tones of the tape loading. Uh, let me just show you the screen. Yeah, not a lot to look at. Uh, and I'm afraid it stays like this all the way through loading. We're not going to get a fancy loading screen or anything like that. Um, also, I'm a bit of a novice on this, but as far as I know, uh, it, the uh, Ataris are notorious for taking a long time to do their loading. So we're going to have to wait quite a while while uh, the uh, game loads in. So I suggest what I do is just um, do a cut here and I'll be back when we've, when we've loaded the tape. Ah, and here we are with Yak the Hairy and Attack of the Mutant Camels. So uh, looks like that has loaded okay, at least so far. Let me grab my joystick and uh, get this going just to prove it's uh, working okay. And here we are taking on our mutant camels that are attacking the Egypt or something. Oh wow, uh, this is all a bit too psychedelic and rapid. Let's just see if we can uh, inflict some damage on these camels. Anyway, I think that proves that the tape deck's working okay again. Uh, and it, I am really delighted to ooh, um, get that going again and get uh, this system back the way it ought to be uh, fully functional. Right, seems like I've got hours of fun ahead of me here trying to defeat the camels doing so well now but uh, that brings me to, to the end of this video um, successful repair of the a Atari 410p take deck hope you've enjoyed watching don't forget to hit subscribe by the way if you uh, want to hear where my next videos are out otherwise join me next time bye for now